This is an NBC 12 special, an interview with the president and Republican response. Good evening and welcome to this NBC 12 special, a conversation with the president. I'm Ryan Nobles reporting from the White House where we just interviewed President Barack Obama. The president released his 2012 budget plan earlier this week and local Congressman Eric Cantor was one of the first people to criticize it. We asked the president about his sometimes volatile relationship with our local congressman and what that means for those of us that live in Richmond, Virginia, when we sat down for a lengthy conversation in the White House map room. How would you describe your relationship with Mr. Cantor and does it affect us all in Richmond that you do have somewhat of an icy relationship, at least from the way it appears to you us? Know, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's icy. Look, you know, uh, Eric Cantor is a uh, Republican leader in a house. Uh, we just went through two years in which they were interested in winning back the house. Uh, he's now in a position of responsibility, uh, which means that, uh, you know, he's going to have to work with me. Uh, and I think that he wants to uh, try to make progress with me. Um, on the budget, for example, what I've said is, is that all of us agree we need to uh, reduce spending. We have to do it in an intelligent way. Working together was something that both Cantor and Obama told me they want to do more of. The problem is they seem to have different goals about what should happen in Washington to help the people of America. I'm hoping that the president uh, does want to work with us. I think there is some common ground that we can achieve together. Um, but what much of the election was about was that Washington's gotten out of control uh, and that people are unhappy with the fact there aren't enough jobs. And we need to create an environment so the private sector and small businesses can grow again. My hope is, is that we can uh, come to some agreements here because what I think the American people are looking for is not sort of tit for tat political arguments. They're tired of that. What they really want to see is uh, everybody acting like adults and getting together to solve big problems. And, and uh, you know, I trust that uh, Eric Cantor's uh, gotten that message from his voters as well. Much of the budget is connected to Social Security and entitlements, something the president doesn't address in his 2012 budget, but we addressed in our conversation. Will there be a Social Security like we're accustomed to now? And can you keep it sustained without having some sort of drop in benefits or raising the age? Well, look, this is a great question. I, I think it's important for people to understand uh, the current situation. Social Security is actually in reasonably good shape. Um, our big problem on entitlements is actually Medicare and Medicaid, because health care costs are going up so fast at the same time the population is aging. Social Security we can fix relatively easily. Um, the, the big problem right now is that um, uh, if we don't do anything, then Social Security won't go bankrupt. But it means young people your age, by the time you're eligible, you'll get 75 cents on the dollar of what you expected to get back from Social Security. So basically, uh, it's going to involve probably a little more revenue uh, at the same time as there may be some adjustments on the benefit side for future beneficiaries that aren't drastic, uh, but would stabilize the system for the long term. The key is, though, there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to fix Social Security relatively easily so that we're securing benefits for current generations as well as future generations and the basic structure of Social Security does not change. Perhaps the president's biggest accomplishment is his biggest controversy in Virginia. His health care reform law was ruled unconstitutional by a Virginia court. It's working its way through the appeals process right now. The president thinks it's already doing a lot of good. People all across the country, including in Virginia, are already benefiting from this law. Uh, you know, young people who are 26 or older are able to stay on their parents' insurance. So much good that he had a long list of benefits that are happening for Virginians already. Uh, I think what the Supreme Court's going to want to look at is a full record of all these issues uh, by the time it actually looks at it. I'm confident that it will be upheld, and I'm confident that this law is going to end up uh, doing right by the people of Virginia. That view couldn't be more different from the way Eric Cantor feels about the health care reform law. Uh, obviously, Ryan, I mean, I want to repeal the bill. I, I, I think it is something that is detrimental to the health care and well-being of the people of our country and is something that certainly is impeding job growth, which is the number one concern of most Virginians and most Americans. The president feels he's made tough cuts in this budget, but he's not willing to attack those who need the government's help the most. We've got to do it in a way that doesn't uh, you know, take away from education for our kids, 
allows us to continue to invest in infrastructure so uh, businesses want to locate in Richmond or uh, in the United States generally. And my hope is, is that we can uh, come to some agreements. And the decisions made here at the White House have a direct impact on the decisions made in Richmond. I also sat down with Republican Governor Bob McDonald, who has a much different view of what should be going on here in Washington. Our conversation with him when we come back. Welcome back to our NBC 12 special, a conversation with the president. You've already heard what President Obama thinks about the future of this country, but what about our local governor, Bob McDonald, a Republican, someone that often has a different opinion than the president? He often says that Washington spends too much, but much of that spending in Washington goes directly to Virginia in the form of bridges and roads, hospitals and schools. So how would he do things differently? I sat down with him as well, and here is his response. Well, if he's seen the light, he certainly hasn't acted upon it because this budget really doesn't do much. It, it is a paltry amount of savings in light of the, the real crisis that we're in in this country, and most Americans are beginning to see it. The president had a great opportunity to lead on this, make the tough choices, and he blew it. Uh, he could have, uh, based on the recommendations of his own commission, that said we have got to make these changes. They recommended trillions in cuts. And uh, he did maybe 90 billion in cuts. Heck, we've cut 10 billion between Governor Kane and I in the last couple of years in Virginia. It's not leadership, and uh, it's not the tough choices. And Governor McDonald couldn't feel more strongly about the Supreme Court hearing the health care reform challenge right away, regardless of what Congress might do. Why do you think there needs to be this finality of the Supreme Court decision so quickly? Will there be finality with regard to this statute? which has required Virginia already to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in staff and computer and will be uh, calling for Virginia to spend a couple million dollars more starting right now to set up health care exchanges and other insurance regulatory changes and other things to get ready for the 2014 implementation. In other words, we can't wait for a court decision in two, three years to decide whether or not we have to do it or not. The forceful way the governor went after the president's budget made me once again think about his future. If the party's nominee for president, a Tim Pawlenty, a Chris Christie, a Mitt Romney, if they came to you and said, I need you to be my running mate, I need you for the betterment of our party, for our country, you'd have to say yes. Probably. I can just tell you this, I've been governor for 13 months, and uh, it is an enormous privilege to follow in the footsteps of Henry and Jefferson. Uh, I am honestly solely focused on this. I learned as a long, young lieutenant in the Army, if you don't focus on taking the next hill, you're never going to have the battles that come after that. So I'm really not worried about it. What I am concerned about is that we have an excellent nominee to take on President Obama in 2012. But I, I, um, I'm involved with the Republican Governors Association, some other national uh, groups. I get nice opportunities to speak about some of these issues, and I absolutely want to be a part of that. But the rest of it's just speculation. Uh, you know, I want to make sure if we have a good candidate in, uh, in 2012, then uh, I'm going to feel a lot better about the future of the country. And we'll be right back. And before we close tonight, I also asked President Obama about his relationship with Virginia's former governor and what it could mean for his future. This is what the president thinks about Tim Kaine as perhaps the next senator from Virginia. I'd be remiss if I didn't get this opportunity to ask you about Governor Tim Kaine. Right. Uh, there's rumors that you're going to chat to him this week. Is, does he serve you better as the chairman of the DNC, or would you like his vote in the United States Senate? Well, look, Tim Kaine is a great public servant. He's a great friend of mine. Uh, he's done a great job uh, as governor in Virginia and a great job as the chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Uh, I want to hear what he wants to do uh, and where he thinks he, he can best serve. I think he'd be a great senator from Virginia if he chose to do that. Uh, if he wants to stay uh, as chairman of the Democratic National Committee, he's going to do a great job uh, there. Either way, I can tell you that he's as, as good of a friend as he is of, of mine. Uh, he's less concerned about serving me. He's more concerned about serving the American people and the people of Virginia. And you can see our entire interview with President Barack Obama uncut on my political blog, DecisionVirginia.com, and on the station's website, NBC12.com. And for a conversation about what the president had to say, go to our NBC12 Facebook page and give your opinion. Thank you so much for watching. Reporting from Washington, I'm Ryan Nobles for NBC 12.